someone that has like been in business for you know 20 years let's say but they did a great thing because what they did was they were they were focused fully on independence but what happened was um from my own recollection and from my own studies and writing this book is that Leo Cohen uh was very influential of Jay-Z breaking away from Damon Biggs at the time to go corporate because he wanted him to actually reach a larger audience which is you know that's that's understandable as far as you know business goes but you know it turned into him alienating his brothers you know and going he went that route and believed in what Leo Cohen was telling him which was a form of torturous interference you know um that's 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 irresponsible for him to do that within the business um and with him he was with Def Jam to divide the company you know he had a lot to do with breaking that company up and who who knows what we would have seen if Rockefeller stayed together with all those great groups you know you had dip said you had cam you know cam and dip said you had state property and beans you had all these great people that were in a high creative mode and as soon as everything was at its peak it fell apart and what i saw on my end from just being around more around biggs and dame was that you know it was just more of a corporate move more than anything else because i never i, I didn't see argument i didn't see confusion between the brothers it was always love and it was always laughter you know i didn't see any any problems other than you know it's one guy that wanted to go corporate and dame and uh biggs at the time wanted to stay independent you know and but at all all in all no one's right or wrong in the situation it's just what you plan and what you choose to do in business you know with your life you know there's nothing wrong with that right right to speak on jay-z a little bit because oh god and i in a lot of our conversation in regards to this topic we bring up jay-z a lot because obviously uh funk flex his whole premise was talking about the the rockefeller days yeah. jay-z dame dash biggs and, and clearing the air of all of that okay. so we often hear about Dane's perspective in, involving the rock and, and things like that. And we never really hear Jay-Z's and I want to elaborate on that a little bit, but first off, um, we've all heard what's free on, on Meek Mill's new um, champions album. Yeah. We all heard Jay-Z's versus dope and we all broke it down in our ways. Oh God. And I've had the conversation is, is, is Jay-Z almost kind of siding with Dame dash through his lyrics and kind of shunning away from Leo coin through his lyrics in your opinion? No, I don't, I don't think I don't think Jay Z is shunning away from uh, Leo Cohen or going close to Dame as far as his his message because if you think about it, in order for them to really bring forth Rockefeller in the first place, they all had to vibrate on the same frequency, mm -hmm. you know. And by them vibrating on the same frequency originally and how everything started, of course that message is still in Jay Z's heart as well as his mind, but mainly in his heart because. Even his approach to in the corporate world is still a sort of independent approach, you know, regardless if he was with his brothers or not. So I don't believe that Jay Z, I don't believe that Jay Z, this is something that is off all of a sudden he wants, he has a change of heart. I feel like that has always been in his heart. You know, he's an independent by heart. And you can tell, you know, because a lot of people don't know because I'm a, I'm a, I follow everything in hip hop. I remember when he was on the back of the cover with jazz, you know what I'm saying? I remember when he was that. The young dude on the back of the cover helping his homeboy out collaborate with him on his albums mm -hmm. and after seeing that and then seeing him come back into the to back back into the arena of entertainment um which he never really left because he was open up for big daddy kane it was interesting because the independent approach is pretty much the same approach he takes as far as the corporate world it's the same approach it's, it's nothing you know that's the thing that gets people confused is that corporate and independent is the same approach. It's just a building process with either one. Because if you're independent, the name of the game is you're gonna build that company up to one day stand on its own and hire as well as fire people that you want that you that you want to do business with. So, you know, it's the same approach, man. I don't think he has a change of heart at all. I think that these are guys that, you know, are still in alignment with one another as far as the message goes. But for what whatever reason, they're just not able to do business at this point, you know, and that's understandable. It's just, you know, like a bad relationship, you know, mm -hmm. everybody grows and changes. You know, we all go through our changes and that's just what it is. Right. And with that being said, as a hip hop lover, as all three of us are, 
Yeah. Um, do you think that Jay Z owes the people an explanation as to what happened to his Rockefeller split, or just the story? Because we've seen him come out and be candid on other areas of his life um, throughout the year or so, with four 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 releasing and things like that, with the time uh, video and the video right. he did on Rap Radar. Never talks about the Rock though. Do you think, as as a hip hop fan, do you think that Jay Z owes the people an explanation as to what happened? Because we always hear Dane, but we never hear Hope. That's a great question, and I know as far as if if that that question was asked to Dame. Dame obviously would feel like he definitely deserves an explanation. But for me, I personally, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be in conflict with that because I feel like he deserves the right to talk about what he chooses to talk about. He doesn't, he doesn't owe anyone anything. You know what I'm saying? As far as his business moves or what he chooses to do for his family, himself first and his family. I feel like Jay-Z in this situation as well as Dame, I, I feel like these are these are young men that grew in business and they just had a different idea of how they wanted to do business while they were on the journey together. All right. Do you think Jay Z runs away from the question though? Um, I definitely feel like you know there's a form of he doesn't he doesn't go into it based on maybe in his own way he has his own beliefs that you know he wasn't really trying to alienate his brothers. He just had a different focus in business. You know, it's like. It's like if someone was at, you know, here again, if you were in a relationship with a young lady and you're no longer with that young lady, you have children by her, you know, would you really, and there was something that really went down where she cheated on you and she did some silly stuff to you, would you really throw her on the bus in an interview, you know what I'm saying, and you have children that are connected to this woman and it's going to affect the way people look at not only her, but it's going to uh, affect your children as well when they hear this message. So I feel like Jay-Z is in this situation is he has the right to not say anything. But at the same time, we would love to hear it. Like a lot of people want to hear like what really went down and what his feelings were at the time. But, you know, as far as him being a loyal guy, I think that's a form of his loyalty too. too. as actually in a strange way, it's still I think it's his own loyalty towards what they built as a team. You know, he doesn't want to throw Dame under the bus. He doesn't. Bigs under the bus, and he's approaching it really kind of how like, you know, you know, some people approach things like that. They don't like to go into things. They don't like to bring things up based on, you know, they don't want to hurt anyone else that was involved in the situation or him making a decision to do what he wanted to do. So I feel like he has the right to chill and fall back if that's what he chooses to do. But people would love to hear it. I know that. You know, I'm one of them. I, you yeah. know, it's interesting to hear his take on why he left. You know, why he went the other way. Definitely, definitely. I want to ask. I'm going to go back to uh, Leo Cohen. Uh, and I want to, in your opinion, I want to get your opinion on why exactly do you think that uh, Leo Cohen would send pick Funk Master Flex to send shots, particularly at Damon Dash, out of all the other people? Why do you think he would do that? Well, he couldn't use Charlemagne. That's first, as we saw. Um, you know, you have to, you have to get someone that's willing to go out there and fight your battle. And it seems as if Funk Master Flex, Flex was willing to do that for whatever reason. He might have had some monetary reason. He might have threw him a little money or maybe told him he would put him in a position um, that he's not in right now that he can make his life better. And so and we see this all the time where people move based on the on the bag. You know what I'm saying? They move based on the paper bag, you know, the under the table money and they'll sell their people out. You know, and that's what we're seeing when you're seeing the situation with Funk Master Flex. You're seeing you're seeing the epitome, the the real true sellout situation. You were really seeing a real true sellout situation when you're seeing Funk Master Flex move like that, speaking on business that's not even his business, and using his platform to spread this message. You know, I think it's irresponsible. I think, like again, I said, I think it's disgusting that he's being used by them. Mm -hmm. to downplay what Dame and Jay-Z and Biggs put together and putting everything on on Dame, you know, because as you know, within business, he's not the only piece to the puzzle. There's other pieces to the puzzle. He's a big piece to the puzzle, but he's not the only piece to the puzzle. Let's just be clear here. Like, let's understand that, you know, you can't do anything by yourself. You need to, you need a team to help. Let's talk about his puzzle a little bit, because that leads me sure. into my next question. You talked about Charlemagne the God in 105.1. And yeah. we've been very critical about our, our boys over there at Hot 97. Now, I've said that they're cavemen. I said that they are way past their prime, and it's time for a lot of them over there, in particular Funkmaster Flex and Ebro to go. 
Uh, yeah. Do you think that this was a, a plot on, on Leo Cohen's part and Hot 97's part to gain publicity on, on a dying brand, in my opinion? Now, that being said, Hip, uh, Hot 97 has a great website and things like that. I'm talking in regards to YouTube numbers, social media, the youth, today's mm -hmm. standard and how you listen and watch hip hop. Do you think that they're failing in that? Do you think that this was a, a publicity stunt in their regard? Absolutely a publicity stunt. It was absolutely meant to spread a message to discredit independence, to discredit the message that I sat with Dame and Dash with and Dame had before, before he even met me and before they went back when they started Rockefeller to discredit the message of independence. For you to etch in your mind that you need them in order to be successful, to continue that legacy. That legacy only helps them in the end, as you see. You see what I'm saying? It's like we help them by getting on their fields. We're playing their games. We're on their courts. We're on their we're, we're within their companies. And in the end, you see a lot of our people, they're broke. They don't have anything to look forward to. The people that really get paid the real dollars are the people that own the companies that own these football fields and these stadiums and these these arenas and own the team and all this stuff. And then in the end, they give these guys a little dollar and say, here's here's a little money for you, you know, but they're giving people money without any form of education as far as for any financial education, mm. you know, because as you all know, growing up in the hood, it, you know, like most of these people that are that are in entertainment, that we most of us we only we're only we're only products of what we grew up with our point of reference had to make things stretch our point of reference had to do what we had to do you know what i'm saying i don't know if y'all came up in this but mama had to cook pots of food in order to feed us mm -hmm. and we ate the, that pot of food until it was gone you see what i'm saying it wasn't no spoiling going on for some reason you know what i'm saying mama had we had four days in the, in the same pot you know so you got these people that that don't know anything don't have financial literacy they're fine just don't have it you know what i mean they're financially illiterate and so we gotta you know when you're giving people that type of money and and you're throwing them out in the streets and you're saying hey here you go go do what you have to do what happens is we try to put a band-aid over the pain through the things we buy you know the things that we didn't have when we were younger we try to we try to supply that 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 hole that's in our lives because we didn't have the things we wanted when we were growing up through materialism you know saying we buying cars clothes you know we're spending big money on and you know and it's it's a circulatory process because we're spending the money back with them and it mm -hmm. comes back through them and then you're talking about a, the, you're talking about companies that are the foundation of the prison industrial system mm -hmm. so they're mm -hmm. putting rappers out to talk all this rah-rah and all this gangster stuff you know what i'm saying and, and keeping people filled up filling their psyche up with all this gangster talk and all this drug deal talk and it's like another circle that takes place it's like we're hearing it because it's pumping in your brain and a lot of people are easily influenced not all people but a lot of people let's just say majority are easily influenced by what they hear see and whatever's around their circle you know what i'm saying as we should know and so you know we have to be we have to understand that when anytime you hear something coming from them you have to question it Question anything you hear coming from them. You know what I'm saying? And even with Funk Master Flex, these are pawns. They're pawns. Funk Master Flex is a pawn. Regardless of what age he is, a pawn is a pawn. You know, he's being used to bring forth a certain message to downplay independence, to downplay self, self, self care. You know, because if you look at it, He's not talking about anything that uplifts people. He's talking about all day, he's talking about freestyles and what's somebody did. I mean, like, come on, man. Like, it's enough distractions. And look when the distraction is coming in December, right before your so-called New Year's resolution. The resolution should be every, every as soon as you want to make it, really. But, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's a distraction that keeps people focused on the silly shit instead of focusing on themselves and building a better situation for themselves as well as their families. Absolutely. Talk about that, though, Um, like the beats, because um, one thing that Dame, he said this a long time ago, and he even said it recently. He talked about how different people, in, in particular, Leo Cohen, are now paying rappers or even a night in beast and right. kind of just sitting back and benefiting, getting the bag off of it. And, and, and they get all the money, but it gets serious because guys are dying in the street. Yeah, you know, um, people's getting all types of threats. Talk about that whole thing about, you know, um, Lawyer Cohen paying people 
to to uh to beef and respond to people that yeah. made a diss record. That's that was interesting. Dame Dame brought that up, brought that to my attention a long time ago. And mm -hmm. you know, another another situation that was disgusting to me because as we all know, beef sells. Mm -hmm. And we learned that, we learned that not too long ago with Tupac as well as Biggie. You know, that situation, if you really look under the hood, I'm sure that made so much money that to this day they're trying to still get things to that level whoever they can get to beef, whoever they can get to talk about each other. And don't get me wrong, there are times where people have disagreements and they don't really get along, you know, but it seems as if it's only the rappers that do that because you didn't really hear about the Temptations having beef with the Four Tops like that. You didn't hear about Marvin Gaye having beef with Isaac Hayes and stuff like that. And I'm sure maybe these people did have disagreements, but it's being sold, filth is being sold so because they want to continue to fill our minds up as black people in the streets with the filth so we can also approach it the same way they're approaching it and continue to have beef amongst our community with people in our communities. You know what I'm saying? It's like, a, like again, a circulatory process. It's like if they fill you, fill, fill you up with so much garbage, garbage in is garbage out. Input is output. You see what I'm saying? So if I can keep feeding you garbage, how do you really expect your life to be if you're influenced by the garbage I'm feeding you? The screen, your life is going to be chaotic. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be a mess. You know what I'm saying? Because input always leads to output. And that's why they share all these things with us and put all this beef in our face. And who's talking about who and who did what? And, oh, now Funk Master Flex is beef. It, it went beyond beyond the mic. I mean, beyond music. Now it's a radio DJ getting at a guy that's independent. Mind his own business, taking care of his children. Mm -hmm. You know, for someone that put a battery in his back because he talked about him within his book and he has every right to because he had an experience with this guy. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like telling a young lady if she's been molested by somebody that she can't talk about the guy that molested her. She has every damn right to speak about the guy that did any damage to her growing up. In the same way Dame had a right to speak about the torturous interference that was going on at Rockefeller through Def Jam. He has a right to speak on that because he built that company by his hands. Some people say because they were selling drugs beforehand, that's a problem, but we're talking about people that put their minds together to bring forth something. You know, and they were young men. So, you know, I, it's not about me sitting here to be moral. Oh, well, the moral of it is they shouldn't have did that. And I, I'm not getting into all that because that's that's irrelevant. They did what they had to do. Like a lot of people, in the, you already know. You know, it's just what it is. What does it say to the power of hip hop that people are so hell bent on on steering the narrative and creating the beef? Because, like you said, in no one in, in no other genre other than hip hop, do you see this kind of perpetuation being stirred up? So, what does it speak on of the power of hip hop that they're so hell bent on keeping it negative? Because even in the stories that we've heard, or, or the or the or the our favorite rappers from the '90s or early '80s, yeah, they may have been talking about drug use, perpetuating little things like that, but they were talking about things that they were going through. It was a story being told behind it, and to a sense, we all heard the story, and we, we was it was being told what not to do. Yeah, we like to dress like them and move like them, but they were telling us what not to do. You don't hear that now. So, what does it speak on the power of hip hop that they're trying to dumb it down and create to be so crazy out here nowadays? Well, that's a great question. I, I've seen this happen because, you know, I was a young, I was a little kid growing up in the 80s and I've always been influenced by hip hop. Hip hop today, as we all know, is the number one music in the world universally. OK, and let's not let's not disregard that is it is the voice of the street still to this day, even if that voice is mumbling, it's still the voice of the streets. Mm -hmm. And so if you have that type of influence over people that are impoverished and you can wake them up by you saying something that can stimulate their minds and stimulate their hearts to go out there and to be courageous enough to step into independence or step into whatever it is they're trying to do, they are absolutely going to try to manipulate that and stop that from happening through putting up all these nonsense rappers that you see today. And I'm not naming names, but we know who they are because you can hear it through the music. You see what I'm saying? And you got to remember, as I as I told you guys before, hearing the same message over and over again is not where you want to be, because just like you have to understand, like the conscious mind impregnates the subconscious mind. But that's only based on if the seed that the subconscious mind is receiving is a new seed of information and, and, and 
and you're giving this seed to them because what happens is it turns into it turns into it turns into uh, masturbation when you're hearing the same thing over and over again mm -hmm. as false or seeds. So there's no one really in hip hop today unless it's someone from the underground or someone from the 90s that was already doing it or the 80s that's really challenging the minds of our people. There's nothing in the music that challenges you right now. There's nothing that's really making you think on a higher level. So why not destroy something that we did when we were sitting on the couch? You saw me and Dame sitting there, two men speaking about independence, business, how to be a man, how to take care of your children, how to balance being a father and going after your purpose. Mm. They don't want you to hear this stuff. They don't want you to see the, these type of conversations because it's in their best benefit to keep people dumb, deaf, and blind so they can continue to ma manipulate them to pull money out of their pockets. You see what I'm saying? One way or another, it's just like what's going on with Christmas. You keep you keep circulating the money back out to the same people that you get. It's a, it's a circulatory process. It's an oppressive process. So there are always going to be people that want to destroy the voice of hip hop because it, it, it started off as the voice of the streets. It still is the voice of the streets, but the voice of the streets now is becoming dumbed down by thing, they're not talking about anything. So if you're not talking about anything, you got a 50 year old DJ playing stuff and he's not talking about nothing. I haven't really heard Flex say too much about helping people get their business started or, or, or nice. looking at themselves metaphysically or talking about occult knowledge. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's the same thing over and over again. So everything when anytime you go to Hot 97 or a lot of these stations, it's masturbation. You keep hearing the same thing over and over again, and it's not impregnating you with a new thought paradigm in order to move forward into having a better and a greater life, not only for yourself, but for your family as well in your community. So it's masturbation. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing over and over again. And what happens with Matt? What happens with 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 the what's the hypnotist trick? They you get sleepier and sleepier mm -hmm. as they keep doing the same thing in front of your face. As you keep hearing the same thing over and over again, it begins to dumb you down. They want to dumb you down. They want to dumb down you even having willpower enough to get off your ass and make a move. They want you to rely on them for everything that's brought forth. Anything that you do for your family, they want you to rely on them on purpose. All this is on purpose. Mm -hmm. Leo Cohen using Funk Master Flex to diss people talking about independence to diss a book that's based on principles of independence that Damon Dash used, if you really think about it, that book must be more powerful than they're making it look like it is. This, it must be, it must be more, I know it's a powerful book, but it must be more powerful to them than we even imagined. Because you got someone talking about their own experience and what they did with that experience, which creates what? Solution. But they want to keep us in the problem. That's why they play all that bull crap. That's why they show us all that crap. That's why they they make us trip off of off of monetize. Everything is monetization and all this stuff. So we so we so we so we play ourselves by talking about things that further distract our people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? The reason you haven't seen hip hop motivation videos up in a while because I refuse to further distract people. It has to be a subject and a topic that really hits the hearts and minds of our people because. We've been we we've been in this position a little too. It's it's going it's way too long. It's been too long before we was even born. You know what I'm saying? It's time for us to use our message to bring people forward and not to keep people distracted by the dumb shit going on because it's too much dumb shit going on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not it's not getting any better. It's just more distraction. It doesn't even give us an opportunity to sit still and get to know ourselves. And you can't move forward in life unless you sit still. And tap in and tune in to the goodness and the greatness within yourself, which a lot of people deflect from themselves being the most high God, the inner God, the inner resources within yourself. You, you, you're you distracted from getting to know the inner resources of yourself, the real jewelry, the real gems that are within you to bring forth. You know, and so if you can't sit still and sit quiet and you get all these distractions and different things going on, it's like social media. That's why social media is so important for their agenda. It's so important for the distraction. As long as you're distracted, 
You cannot stay in tune with the real, true, and living within yourself. It's all on purpose. Look how big that shit is with Funk Master Flex right now. Like him and Dane going back and forth. That was the most shared. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But what happens if them two brothers get together and they shoot each other? They fighting each other. They gonna profit off that. They gonna they 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 gonna make a mockery of oh look at these dudes. Oh he oh he wasn't really living what he was saying. He's talking all this talk about you know helping people out. But look at him. He, he's fighting Flex and Flex is doing. It's like the same thing over and over again. And now they're doing with older cats. Because Dame is older, yeah. and Master Flex is older, and it's it it's it's just silly, plain and simple, man. Not to go long winded on y'all, nah. but it's just silly, you know what I'm saying? It's all silly, man. This is actually a disgusting display of what happens when they put the when they put the bag in your face. They go under the table and say, "Hey, hey, you think you can go at him for us? Because we we're afraid to battle him because they don't have no power. They act like they have power. They don't have no power. They don't have power over us." But it's it's they they do that on purpose. It's a it's all on purpose, man. It's all on purpose, man. Trust me. You know, they sell wolf tickets. Put it like that. Huh. It's wolf tickets. What you, what, you, what are your thoughts on the um the three sixty deal? You know, you three sixty deal. Damn, I had a, yeah. I wrote about that. That the three sixty yeah. deal. Um, to me, about hearing about it initially. It was interesting because, you know, when I look at it from a standpoint of someone profiting off of everything around the table, initially it doesn't sound too bad if you're the person in the position, if you're the executive, right? But the only problem with it is, is you're you're ripping apart, you're taking pieces of everything around the table. And then when they are, when you are in the position, when the, when the, per the artist is, do to be paid a certain amount from their publishing and everything else, you're taking big chunks of that. And sometimes they're not getting that at all. So it, it turns into a situation where it's a, it's a business move. If you know, on the executive's parts, it's of course a bit, it's a benefit. It's beautiful. But as far as the artists, it keeps them minimum wage, basically as an artist, you know what I'm saying? They, they're, they're minimum wage artists because they're not getting, the profits that they should be getting from their own create creativity. As we saw with publishing and, and the old groups back in the day, you know, a lot of these guys die broke, you know, and their families and their children don't benefit from what they created. You know, when I heard that Tupac's whole catalog was owned by somebody else, I was like, whoa, wait a minute, his sister's still living, what happened? You yeah. know, these things is, these things are something to look at, but at the same time, those are also distractions, you know, because at the, at the end of the day, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, as they tell you, what is a man to, it's like you, you, you lose, you lose focus on the true and living within yourself. You lose focus on what you really need to be doing in your own agenda. And that's what I said, even on my post is like, stay, get back focused on your purpose. If you're focused on your purpose, everything will be that much better. You know what I'm saying? If you really love what you're doing and you're in music, you know, you don't want to go the corporate route. You know, if you really love it, you're going to do it regardless. And you're going to figure out a way to make sales. You're going to figure out a way to bring your creativity to the to the world stage. And, and it's a journey and it's a process and it's a beautiful process and journey because it gives you an opportunity to express yourself no matter what. You know, but the 360 deal is ether to the artist and it keeps the artist at minimum wage. You know, you're exactly. working. You're working for the company forever. Keeps you tied up. Now we see a lot of major labels doing 360 deals, but how familiar are you with indep independent labels? These are smaller labels that are um, distributed by major labels, right. but they're more on an independent. Are they? Uh, what's your familiarity with those in with independent labels, and how how detrimental are they for artists? Are they better or worse than in the, um, major labels, in your opinion? And that's a, that's subjective. I mean, I think like at times, you know, people throw the independent flag around too much and they're not really independent because at the end of the day, they're just doing it. They're just doing it for themselves. They're not looking at the art. They're not looking at the the, the business. I mean, the, get, making sure that the people that they sign are being put in the right position, you know, but I don't know so much. I don't really I don't really know so much that, you know, there is a one-sided scenario to the situation because i feel like you know when you get the right lawyer and you get the right people in your corner 
and you 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 go do that before you even sign this paperwork and you gotta you know you gotta just know what you want you have to redefine what it is you want in the situation because some people are okay with signing the 360 as long as they are famous as long as they're paying some bills to take care of their family and they're not working at mcdonald's so it's a it's it's a it's a real deep situation there's a polarity of answers for that you know there's no it's almost like there's no right or wrong to it in the situation which i believe in it's it's just whatever you choose to do and it's it's like the artist just gets out there and they don't have a real understanding of where they want to go what they want to do and what they're what they what they still what they want to still do as far as their creativity goes you know they get in there and they get manipulated it's a sad thing, man. You know, it's it's like the most important thing is to do your research, do your homework on business, you know, know the business, understand the business, you know, don't just be a creative, understand the business, become administrative and learn how to do things yourself. So that way, when you do get on the get get in the in front of these big boys at the corporations, you know, you can talk that talk and you know what they're saying to you. And it won't be foreign, you know, so research is the most important aspect of becoming greater and adding value to yourself no matter what business you're in absolutely let's talk about um we want to know right now man what's the secret to ball and talk about that you know for the people who, who didn't see the last interview who's going to see this portion of the interview talk about that man that book and your your whole little uh independent journey with that yeah um well to start off like what happened was like uh you know in a nutshell the story of the day I came up with the concept for hip hop motivation, as well as the secret of balling. I was shot six times, left for dead, was in critical condition. Um, I wrote down, I was gonna do an audio book called Thinking Ball Out. And on Thinking Ball Out, there was an interview I did with Damon Dash called The Secret of Balling. Now, The Secret of Balling was always, you know, beyond Thinking Ball Out standing out, was a big standout among people that were, anyone that heard the audio book was like, man, that interview was off the chain. Like, they would always tell me that the interview was dope. Originally, initially, I interviewed Three Six Mafia before I interviewed Dame. And their story is very similar to Dame's story, other than they were really coming out of the trunk on some two short shit. You know what I'm saying? They was really selling CDs and tapes out the trunk, you know, and built up their brand. And I wanted to use the interview, but um, their lawyer was kind of, you know, going back and forth with me about using the interview and you know, I, I wasn't willing to just put my project on hold to wait for him to approve some paperwork. So I moved forward and I went and uh, talked to Dame about doing the interview. And he said he would do it. He signed the release right off the bat. I called it the secret to balling. And from there, because I got so much feedback from his interview, I said, what if I go around and talk to a lot of different people from all walks of life and ask them the same questions about different things that apply to business? And that's what you have when you see the movie, The Secret to Balling. It was more of a case study. It wasn't really meant for me to, um, I wasn't really thinking so much of blockbuster movie. I was just more thinking about doing a case study with different people from all walks of life and getting some answers on what are some things that are valuable as far as going on your journey and achieving things. Like what are some valuable things that someone should do in order to achieve their goals? And that's what I got. And I found out that the main thing is just really having a true understanding of yourself, you know, doing research, you know, prayer and meditation is in there. I got a chapter called God lives through prayer and meditation, which talks about centering yourself, spending time alone, getting quiet. You know, when you're praying, you're praying really to yourself and, and getting the answers you need in order to go further on your journey. And, the secret to balling reveals itself to each person. It's it's like different things. I hear different things anytime I watch the movie, and I've watched the movie thousands of times. I hear different things every time I watch the movie. So it depends on where you're at. You know, it may be research that really sticks out to you. You may need to up your value through doing research. You may need a little more, become a little more imaginative and get into the imagination, the imagination faculty, or you need all of them. You know, so that's what that's what that movie is about. And it was a pleasure working with everybody involved. I didn't have anyone on the list to do that movie. Mm -hmm. And it came together, you know, because of the focus that I had. Dope. Yeah, you talked about it um, on our previous interview. You said it again on this on this interview right here. The people got on us, man. So you got shot six times. Yes. And we didn't ask what happened during that event. So yeah. I, I was sitting there thinking about that a lot. And 
it, it had to be something extraordinary to go from being shot six times yeah. to picking yourself up and going from where you were. So just expound on that journey as much as you can from being shot and then picking yourself up in the events that transpired just from that event on. No problem, man. And I, yeah, I read a few of the comments. People were saying, well, you must have got shot for some reason or something, something happened or you must have been doing this. Y um, you know, and that's funny because that's what the police officers came and asked me when I was laying there and I couldn't breathe and blood was coming out of my mouth and I was just in that struggling situation. But no, actually it was a random event. You know, I was on my way to cut Method Man from Wu-Tang Clan, you know, uh, fortunately, I never got involved in gangs. You know, I never sold drugs. Um, it's um, That doesn't make me any better than anyone else because that doesn't make me immune to being shot. But I didn't live the lifestyle of beefing with nobody. I had no beef. I had no problems with anyone in the streets, not that I know of. You know, I didn't take anything from anyone. I was just a man running a barbershop on Crenshaw Boulevard in Los Angeles. And I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. And that can happen to any of us. You know, it's like a car accident. You could be stopped at the light and somebody rear ends you. You know what I'm saying? And, and that things happen, you know. And so in that situation, I uh, it was a Hispanic guy. He came out. I was on the phone. Ironically, I was on the phone complaining about where I was staying at the time. And the guy came over and he put the gun in my face. When he put the gun in my face, of course, naturally the phone dropped, everything dropped. I was going in my gate. I heard someone say, hold up. Then I saw the gun. When I looked over and saw the gun, I hit him with the gate and I started running. And he shot me, shot me in the back first. And he shot me on the other side. He was a pretty damn good shot. He shot me. He was hitting me. He hit me six times. Um, and then what happened was the last bullet hit me in my leg and I fell face forward into the ground. And then he ran up and put the gun close to my uh, temple because I felt the barrel, it was still hot uh, by my face. And uh, he pulled the trigger and he, and he pulled it three times, click, click, click. And when he pulled the trigger, you know, um, I thought that was it. But he ran off, the cops came up, harassed me in that situation. I, uh, just so happened I got shot in the Rampart division, you know about Rampart back in the day, that's connected to the Rodney King situation. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was a Hispanic cop and a white cop. Not that their race had anything to do with this, but you know, we know that pigs come in different forms and different colors. Yeah. And so he walked up to me and asked me what I did to deserve this. That was the first thing he asked me. Um, I couldn't breathe, so I couldn't really talk. And I said, nothing, please help me, please help me. He said, oh, you must've did something to deserve this. And then the white <laughs> cop asked me my name standing over me. He said, what's your name? I said, yeah. He's like, yeah, he's helped me. I couldn't, but again, I couldn't breathe, so I couldn't really talk. And when I told him my name as much as I could, he said, I can't understand you. Um, if you don't tell us your name, we can't get you any help. At that moment, I heard ambulances coming already because someone in the building complex, they called uh, 911 and said that, that, that uh, I needed an ambulance. Um, I got an ambulance and they were unattentive you know, because you have a lot of people that work these jobs and they, they're they not doing what they really love to do. You know, I understand people are trying to get that check, but they had me in there. I had to hold myself on the gurney. I had to, uh, I kept asking them to put the mask on my face because I couldn't breathe. What? Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was one, it was one hell of an experience. And then some of the nurses was assholes. Damn near putting their thumb in my bullet wound to flip me over to change my bandages. And, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was a very humbling experience. I turned into a different person in the in the fold of that because I got a chance to really see and understand that, you know, you have you have to be, you know, you really truly have to be of a certain mindset in order to get somewhere in life. And you got these people in there, they 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 don't want to be there and they shouldn't be there because and then there were some great nurses and some great doctors and people that really had love, but off the back, they was looking at me like I was a gangbanger. You know what I'm saying? I'm six foot two, you know what I'm saying? 285 pounds. So they looking at me like, oh, this dude had to be, had to do, had to have done something to someone that he's a gangbanger and not at all. Not at all. I just, that's not my lifestyle. That's not my approach, you know? And so I got depicted as a Suge Knight character and they didn't even know who I was. They didn't, they didn't know about my little son waiting on me to get home. You know, right. you know about my little daughters waiting on daddy to come home and they just, just just didn't understand, you know, and that's the problem with in, in connection to a guy like 
Folk Master Flex, who is uh, used for these radio stations to play all this violent music and all this negativity that people overseas and people all over the world, because they hear black men saying these different things and doing these different things, they look at all of us as heathens. They look at all of us as game bangers. You know what I'm saying? Because this is what is presented to the world stage in representation of other black people. And so if this is what's presented, think about it. That's why they looked at me that way. That's why that cop could walk up and ask me what I did to deserve this, because I'm a guy, a black guy in the hood. And, you know, I had a white T-shirt on, but a white T-shirt doesn't make you a gangster. I could have had a button up on, you know, and no one deserves and no one deserves to get treated like that. No one deserves to get shot and, 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 and gunned down. No one deserves that. That's a transgression that breaks the law. You've taken that person's right to live or taken that person's right to feel good in their body temple. And that's a transgression. That's what I want to get people back in, uh, back involved with is understanding natural law, universal law, and understanding what a transgression is. And that's my mission as long as I'm here. You in, in, in a situation like that, that, that would turn somebody very dark to deal with what you had to deal with like after that. But it seems like, and I, I don't know you very well, but in the various interviews and various conferences, conversations that we had, it seems like your light has shined the most since that event. That being said, was it the, your core principles that kept you even alive as well as obviously your family? Or did you gain those core principles and to get cult lilas and things like that after that event? Well, what was going on in your brain and in your body to keep you alive when everyone wanted you gone? Mm. That was, that's a great question. I've never been asked that question. And um, I have the answer for that question is that, you know, I definitely was studying heavy beforehand, but those changes came after the fact. I remember the day I was out of the hospital and I, I actually went by my shop. I went home, got dressed. I went by the shop. I was on a, on, on a, a cane because I couldn't really walk on the leg. I got shot in. And uh, I remember sitting in front on Crenshaw Boulevard and just feeling the air and feeling the wind. And I just was thinking to myself, like, you know, how is this, how am I going to allow this to affect me? Because at that time, when I first went back to the shop, it was a little tricky for me because I didn't know who was going to walk up on me again with a gun, you know, and uh, I didn't know if I was going to get shot again. So I, there was a little apprehension with being around people at first, but then I let that go because I knew and I understand the principle of fear. And why fear shuts down your connection to the source and your connection to advancement. See, fear is fear. Fear is the number one weapon used in mass mental destruction. Fear is the number one weapon they use for mass mental destruction, especially with our people, especially with people from the culture of hip hop. They use these things. And so I dropped the fear element. And I chose the life element. I dropped the darkness element and moved towards into the light of understanding, you know, because I learned there, too, because it, I felt the feeling of dying and coming back because I blacked out as well. And it was the most peaceful feeling still to this day I've ever had, because while I was laying on the ground, the ants that were crawling through my blood became a part of me. Everything that I was laying on was a part of me. You know, what I'm saying everything that was that that was so-called you know, uh, around me, it felt as if I melted into everything that was around me, but I came back, you know, and I'm, I'm thankful that I was able to uh, come back and be used to, you know, transmit this information for people as much as I can, you know, because it's, it's about, it's about awareness, you know, it's not about, it's not, it's not about just staying ignorant and staying in the dark. It's about becoming aware of certain things and going into the light of consciousness. At your level and your speed. Powerful, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, very, very powerful, man. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm at a loss of words. I it definitely inspired me, you know, hearing that. And I was thinking the same thing you were saying. I could have turned a lot of people, yeah, you know, the dark side, like going through all that. Yeah, I um I I, I will admit, like I said, I, I did have there was a fear element the first day, but I had to drop it. But the mo most important thing that I really learned in that position was not taking no day for granted. You know, because I was looking at no more tomorrows laying there. And so I was sarcastically while I was laying. There, I was like, damn, this is it. You know, and I had just just dropped my daughter and my son off to their mother's house. Um, they wanted to go with me. 
And but my daughter was looking so bad that day. Her hair was a mess. Her shoes. She wasn't dressed right. And it was the weirdest day in the world because they usually are with me on Friday nights. It was a Friday when it happened, the day after my 29th birthday. And uh, I dropped them off because I didn't want to take them with me looking that bad, take her with me looking bad like that. And, and so I got on the phone with her mother and I was trying to chew her mama out, you know, like, damn, why you got her looking bad? You know, she going with me. I got to go cut meth up. And she was like, you know, get off my case. She went off on me, like, you know, how women can do, you know, mm -hmm. saying that she had every right to. And she said, you know, my uh, the, the, the power went out in the building, so my alarm clock didn't go off. So I had to rush and get to work because I already had been late to work. See how see how the source energy worked. It was it was on purpose that I was I, I I dropped my children off because imagine if they were there with me and I'm struggling to live or they might have gotten shot. Yeah. But I dropped them off beforehand, and so this happened on purpose because the purpose that I was willing to do that I put on paper before I got up and went to uh, pick my children up was to do a company called Hip Hop Motivation and bring forth information for a people that had been left in the dark on purpose. But it was absolutely because I was looking at No More Tomorrows that it changed my life forever. You know, because I, now I live my life since that day to the fullest. I don't give a damn if I don't do anything or if I'm just chilling. I make sure that I express the love I have for my family members and my friends. And, you know, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm in so much more peace than I was before I got shot. You know, I don't take certain things too serious. Uh, even the situation with Dame and them, I, I don't, I am I hear it and I see it. I mean, I'm, I'm involved in it in a small way because of the book, but it's not my focus. You know, my focus is to bring forth great information because I know that people need this information. It helps, you know, to learn how to uh, be okay without all the money in the world, you know, because money is not gonna make you whole. It's consciousness that makes you whole and makes you better, you know, because you see so many people when they have money, they still kill themselves because they lose a little bit of that money. But if you get into the spirit of yourself and you learn certain things that can that are of value for you, you know, it gives you a better chance to be of value to other people in your community. Absolutely, man. Fact. Yeah, this was a powerful, powerful. Once again, you know, interview. I know uh, Brother Sam Man got to go up the road. You know what I mean? Do it. He got yeah, to do, do some, another. some Christmas stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like we got to grab a few things and do what we got to yeah, do, man. It's my man. family. Yeah. Yeah. We we participate. I, I participate a little bit as far as, you know, making sure I grab my children something. The you babies. Know. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Right. Yeah, you know, like that. But I, I'm a year around daddy. I do all this stuff year around. So. We were saying the I'm, same thing. I don't go broke during the holidays at all. <laughs> exactly. It's not it's not Christmas Eve to us. It's Monday to us. And Monday is time to work. They, the I women don't hear that. They don't understand. I, I, I ain't rolling with them, Rod, like that. I'm chilling. Sure. <laughs> but yeah, man, I want to say, you know, um, through that whole experience, you, you have motivated us. You and Dame with your book. That's and you're watching your videos, y'all have motivated us, man. So Thank that you. was for something. We always ask, like, why does stuff happen to people yeah, and yeah, stuff? Yeah. And Maybe it was just to reach, you know, us and who up, who knows, whoever y'all reach probably like millions of man, other people. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. we appreciate it, man. Yeah, Definitely. nothing happens by chance. Everything's on purpose. Everything, you know, even connecting with you brothers, this is on purpose. Everything mm -hmm. has a purpose. Everything is on purpose. Love it. Yes, sir. So with that being said, man, we're gonna wrap it up. I want you to give everybody your um your handles where they can find you, your website, but they can find a book real quick. Yeah, well, to get the book, the Culture Vultures, the book is available on www.culturevulturesthebook.com. And if you want to drop me some lines or you want to, you know, uh, if you have any inquiry, you can hit me at balleninfo at gmail.com. Ballin has no G on it. It's B A L L I N info, I N F O at gmail.com. And uh, you can hit me up on Instagram. I'm, I'm at hip underscore hop underscore motivator. And uh, as you know, you know, Dames is uh, at Dusko Poppington and we have a lot. I have a lot more to bring forth, man, because, you know, Dame is a guy I chose first. And I was glad he gave me the opportunity to write my first book with him. But there's other people that also have information and stories that can um, enlighten the culture of hip hop. Dope. Well, anytime you have anything coming out or anything you want to promote, you know you have a home right here on the Unset the Truth podcast. You hit us up and you yeah, will be the first one to come over here and talk about it, brother. We're oh, we going to connect, man. Still sharp and still, man. Sharp as man. So we're going to connect. Definitely. Indeed, indeed. Blessings, brother. We appreciate you having your time, man. Yes, sir. Sure.